Good morning. We're so excited to be here with you online. Just welcome you in the presence of the Lord. We ask you to come, Lord Jesus, and meet with us this morning. We want to glorify your name, to lift you higher, Lord God. So meet with us today, Jesus. Be welcomed here, Lord God.
Your love will never fail, you're steadfast. Your promises are true, yeah, you're faithful. Come on, church. You cover all my sin with forgiveness. My eyes have seen your ways. You're, sing it again. Your love will never fail, yeah. You're steadfast. Your promises are true. You're faithful. You cover all my sin with forgiveness. My eyes have seen your ways, your goodness. Love and faithfulness meet. We hold your glory, righteousness and
We thank you for your goodness, Lord Jesus. Rise within us this morning, Lord God. Let hope arise, Lord Jesus. Let faith arise, Lord Jesus. Let joy come, Lord God. We need you, Lord. We ask for a stirring of faith here and now, Lord God. Be our strength, Lord God. Father, come in our weakness, in our frailty, Lord God. Let your strength rise up. Let the joy of the Lord be our strength, Lord God. Come, Holy Spirit. We call on you, Lord. We just surrender to you, Lord. We just humble ourselves before you, Lord. We cry out for, for the need of a Savior, Lord. We just recognize our need of you, Lord God. Come, Lord. We wait on you, Lord Jesus.
Trust you, Lord Jesus. You're our help, oh God. Our very present help in time of trouble, God. We trust you. We trust you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We put our faith in you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, good morning, everyone and we want to unite our hearts together in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for your loving kindness to us, for the way that you help us day by day. In these days that are so difficult for so many people, we pray that your hand of direction and your peace will fill our hearts. We think of churches all over who are going through challenges. We pray that you will guide them and direct them and out of this bring to their hearts direction that will show them just what they're to do and how they're to do it. We pray for the many churches that are without pastors now. Send leaders in, pastors in, to guide them in the path that the Lord has for them. For people who are here today and they are challenged by some physical issues, bring them strength in their bodies and just bring them in their hearts a sense of your presence. So be with us this day in the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Good morning, LGT family and friends. Today's reading comes to us from Ephesians 4, verses 29 to 32. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom we were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. Good morning, church. We're so glad that you're watching with us today. And just as we head into fall 2020 and this back to school season, whatever it looks like for you, whether you're a student or a teacher, an educator, a bus driver, whoever you are, maybe you're homeschooling for the first time, we're with you. We're for you. God is with you. We're praying his blessing on you and your family this fall 2020. We want to encourage you at this time as well that we have a new way to give online. So as you continue in your faithfulness to give to the Lord in your tithes and your offerings and gifts, you can do that now through your online banking, through Interac eTransfer, and the email address that you would use is give at lgt.org. So you can include in the comments a little message. If it's your first time giving, please include your address. But we thought that would be a, a nice, convenient way um, for you to be able to give. So we hope that that's helpful for you during this season. I also want to let you know, all the guys out there, all the men, that there's going to be another men's gathering with Pastor Paul and Guess I Am on Thursday, September the 24th at 7 p.m. Just outside the church bring a lawn chair if you're one of the guys you want to be a part of that again it's thursday september 24th at 7 p.m god bless you and enjoy the rest of the service hi everyone sitting here in the sanctuary there's work going on in here but i'm so glad to bring you a message of hope today i've got some notes that i'm going to be referring to and you know we're seeing this season of life and the transition and the world in which we live this fall, we're going back to school and that, but COVID still kind of uh, bringing a very strong, uh, difficult situation to the forefront. Many of our activities and actions that we're trying to figure out, how do I act in this time? And what's the way, uh, what are the possibilities that God has for me? Last week, we looked at some scriptures and I preached the same sermon in the parking lot last week as I did online. And I'm going to give you a few scriptures today. We talked about four people in the Bible, Moses, David, Joseph, and Abraham, and how God in their life 
waiting was part of their life. If you looked at the time frames, Moses waited 40 years and the, the process of waiting perfected what God was wanting to do in their life. Why did Moses have to wait 40 years? Why not 39? Because God couldn't do in that process of time, the time it took for God to do whatever he wanted to do, uh, it took 40 years for Moses. David, he took 15 uh, years from when he was anointed king over Israel to when he became king. And he ran, it's like the opposite direction of what you would think would happen when God made him the promise happened. He, he had to run for his life. It says he was like a dead dog or a, or a, a partridge, which is a bird uh, living out in the desert. Joseph, the time in which God spoke to him that you're gonna rule over your brothers, your family, I'm gonna raise you up. And the second that thing happened, that word promise came, if you looked at his life, his entire life went the other direction. And then God, though, then fulfilled what he promised in time. Abraham was another one. Abraham was promised a son. But the point is, it wasn't just that God said, Abraham, you're going to have a son. It's that it was that son represented uh, that God made him a promise. And the promise was, I'm going to make your offspring as numerous as the sea and you're going to be a unique nation on, uh, in the world and in, on the earth. There was a redemptive uh, promise in these promises beyond just having a kid. God had something to work in, not just in his life, but in the world. It was an amazing promise. God is an amazing promise. Each one of these men in the Bible, they had amazing promises but then they had to wait for the promise to become active or real. And that's the turnaround time right now. We're all having to wait. And so we don't necessarily see that, you know, God will give you a promise in your life. But in COVID, now you're just sitting there waiting. You don't want to give up. There's no, and I pointed this out last week, there's nowhere in the Bible, there's no reference point where giving up is part of God's uh, what God wants you to do. There's, there's literally no precedent in the Bible of anyone giving up and God working what he wants to do. If you give up, God's not going to, you don't have a precedence in the Bible. The Word of God doesn't contain a precedence for giving up. It's nowhere in the Bible. So we're going to look at this topic and uh, part of uh, waiting is endurance. So scripture says you cannot bypass uh, endurance and enter into the promises of God. To enter into the promises of God and these four men, their lives and what God worked in them, that's a good example. You can come so far. Hear me on this. So when it comes to God giving promises, you can come so far in your walk towards the promises, but the completeness of God's promises only comes through endurance. Now, this is building what I'm saying on last week's message. If you haven't seen it, you may want to watch uh, and when you're through this and watch last week as well. So just when it seems impossible to hold out, that's when you have to hold out. It's like Moses waiting 39 years and then giving up. If he'd have waited, he waited the, the completeness was in the waiting of the 40. And God never tells you when you're in a test, you know, God's testing you. He never tells you that you're being tested. God never tells you, but, but God wants to work through you in this time. And God wants to work you through this time of waiting. And that's, that's the completeness. When you're in a test, you never, you, God never tells you you're in a test. And God never tells you how long the test is going to last. But what I can tell you is God wants to work through you in the test. Please hear me on that. God wants to work with all of us together. He wants to work with us and through us in the test so we can be brought to the point where the promise is the completeness. What, what action God wants to take on our behalf is he wants to work in us, not just to make the meaning clear of what's going on now, but work in us to do what he wants, which part of it is we just have to endure just when it seems impossible to hold out. That's when you have to hold out. And the, the promise, the, the promises, the fulfillment, what God's wanting to do, it comes through endurance. That's what the Bible tells us. 
So we're going to look at some other things today. I would like to say that, it, that uh, to you individually, there's people that are listening to me right now, individually, what I want to say is don't give in. Don't back out now. God is faithful of the promises that you have. You want to finish the course. God didn't promise you something and then back out of his promise. The only one who will back out is you. So God is faithful to his promises. He was faithful to Moses. He, Joseph, for instance. Joseph had a promise about him and his brothers and his life, and it went in the opposite direction for years. But God still made the promise, and then it came to pass that it did occur. So waiting. I want to just share with you a couple of thoughts out of the Bible. It is, what is, what is this thing that then we're waiting? You know, we're in COVID, and it's like we're in this season, and we're just waiting. Now, some people are trying to pick up and move on. We got school, but there's still this in, immense waiting. That It's a field, a field. We're kind of wading through this season. Scripturally, waiting causes us to realize more and more our dependence on God. I, it's like the statement, I can't do anything. I can't make this happen. The pro, that's like Moses. At the beginning, Moses knew that God kind of wanted to use him to set his people free. But in arrogance, he went and killed an Egyptian. He, he kind of tried to do it himself. And the flesh, I remember last week I said Abraham, his wife, was the voice of flesh for a season in his life. And she said, listen to me, do what I say. That is the voice of of flesh right now. You hear you hear people saying that everywhere right now. Listen to me, do what I say. That's and it's like we can fix this if you listen to me and do what I say. And the point is when they say that, the voice of flesh is we can fix this. God has a promise, we can we can fix it. We can make it work. Abraham his wife Hagar said uh, you know, have a, or sorry, his wife said uh, to take Hagar and make a child with her. Sarah said that my maidservant have a child with her. That'll fix us. Listen to me, do what I say. That's, that, that didn't bring completeness to what Abraham had a, a promise for. And remember this is that people who are like, or the flesh, the voice of the flesh which says, listen to me, do what I say. That won't bring completeness. Only waiting. You know, when people by the arm of flesh or the eye of flesh say, you know, listen to me, do what I say. That won't bring completeness. Waiting causes you to realize your dependence on God. And the very first thing you'll do when you kind of are struggling with that is you'll try and make it happen in the arm of flesh. You don't know when he is coming. That's the owner of the vineyard, so to speak. You don't know when God's going to come and set this right. You don't know when God's going to put this in perspective for you but in the dark season the night season you just have to wait we have to depend on him you know when your mac computer doesn't work you have to wait you know when you go to the mall or you used to go to the mall and like you'd have to often get a number and like wait to get this mac expert or your computer expert to come and see the one thing that it caused you to do when you'd wait is it caused you to realize how much you need the tech guy. It's like, man, I, I wish I had the tech guy right now. He could fix this. When it's something beyond your ability to do. I want to just highlight something. God's promises are beyond our ability to do. Please hear me on this. Moses, Abraham, Joseph, David. When God makes a promise to you, it is beyond your ability to do. And in a way, this season of waiting right now, as we wait on the Lord, we have to remember in COVID, it's true. And outside of COVID, it's true, but it's really highlighted. God's promises are beyond our ability to do. So any, any time, like the arm of flesh says, listen to me, do what I say. Anytime somebody comes to you and says, hey, I, I've got it figured out how, like you can do it. In the Bible, it tells us God's promises are beyond our ability to do. There was never a guy in the Bible that came alongside Joseph or David, or, or there was never a guy that came along to, to Moses and said, hey, listen to what I say. You know, Abraham's wife, she was the best example of that. She tried, and I'm sure she was trying to like, not take an easy way out, but it's like, 
she created what's called an Ishmael, which was a person birthed outside. And, and, and so she said, listen to me, go get uh, Hagar pregnant. And then she said, do what I say now, kick him, kick them out, kick Hagar and Ishmael out, get rid of them, send them away. The voice of the flesh just like tells you to do one thing. And then when it doesn't work, tells you to do the complete opposite. The point is, is that God's promises, you cannot, no one, Hagar was not the answer. Sarah tried to come up with an answer, but that's the best example of kind of what we go through even right now. People are like, you just need to do this. Well, you, you can't, only God can make the promises of God in you come through. And waiting is not, endurance is not something that you can forego. It's like you realize how much you need the promises of God, not to perfect you, but you realize is that how much your individual situation, and there's all kinds of us out there, we're in the same boat. Our individual situation can only be perfected, so to speak, not but it can't be made complete by another person. No person can figure this out for you. And in this season of COVID, there's very complex uh, things that we can't sort out. We just, it's like, it's like people can't live with not being able to sort it out. But what I wanna say is very quickly, you start to realize that you really need God. Like you need your techie to fix your computer, your Mac. You need God. So let's look at some scriptures here about these promises. Um, it says more than that in Romans chapter 15, verse four, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. One of the things that I notice with people is that people often get kind of the, uh, and I do, we often in our own mind, we would never figure out the way God arranges things. And I think that's really important to note during COVID. And if you look at that scripture, it says that knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. A lot of people kind of say to me right now, if I only had hope, and it's like the minute we have to wait, we lose hope. And we think that, okay, well, endurance, like we gotta wait, and like hope is the thing that will help us wait. It's interesting that it's your enduring right now, it says here, that will produce hope. So it's a strange thing that when we, when we hold on, and if you give in, you won't get hope. And what, what often happens is people that, or, or, or the voice of the flesh will tell us that you can have hope without enduring and that you can have hope without resisting. Resisting, what do I mean by that? Resisting like becoming someone you don't wanna become. Allow the, allow the character of Christ to build in you. There's no shortcut through character and there's no way outside of endurance to produce hope. Some people are like, yeah, if you just listen to my teaching, you'll get hope. There's a time where teaching, uh, you know, you can't take, you know, you can take the teaching of scripture, but you have to remember that God teaches you that you will have to endure this thing that we're going through. Another scripture, and to get hope, that's amazing to me. Another scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, I can be encouraged by this, no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to men and women. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. So, you know, I think it's really important to realize and some people will tell you, like when you look at the scripture, everyone, Moses, David, uh, even Saul who failed, King Saul before David, he actually failed the test. But David passed the test, Moses passed the test, Joseph passed the test, Abraham passed the te test. Hebrews 10, 36 says, for you have need of endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you might receive what is promised. You see, if God has given you promises, we're in a time right now, people tell you, you know, it's like, I'll give you a way of escaping so you don't have to go through the test. You can't, you can't get outside, away from the test. You just have to endure it. And that's, period, there's no way to do it. You can't get out of this. So let's look at some very positive things. I wanna look at the promises now. 
So God has promises for each of the life of people we looked at last week. Last week we looked at Moses, David, Joseph, and Abraham. All of them had promises, and they had individualized promises, so to speak. And each one of you listening will have a, a, a promise, which is pretty amazing. So let's look at the promises that are put before us. But to look at the promises put before us, we'll look at those in a second. Let's look at the promises that were put before these four men. Now, the promises were so vast put before Moses, David, Joseph, and Abraham. Let's look at one of them. Let's look at Abraham. Uh, you see, though, that Abraham, his promises were very vast, and his promises actually now affect us, which is amazing. Galatians, Paul says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 14, it, 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 it tings something in us when we hear this. It says, the blessing of Abraham talks about the blessing of Abraham that can come to us as well. That's incredible. So the blessing of Abraham, that the promise that Abraham got, that we're talking about, that he waited for, it impacts us today. And it links it, this blessing of Abraham, with the supreme purpose of God in choosing Abraham for himself. That supreme purpose impacts us today. So what you realize is, and I want to just say this, is we, this is a big deal. When you endure for the promises that God has for you, like Abraham did, God's, and like Abraham's blessings, they always will spill out to other people. That's amazing because the Bible links the, prom the blessing of Abraham with something we, right now, right now as I'm talking to you, the blessing of Abraham, it's not above us, it's for us. It's, it's, it's like this is something we can achieve, blessing other people and ourselves. And this is what it says in Genesis 12 about Abraham. It says, I will bless you and uh, I'll just kind of jump and you shall be a blessing and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So the fulfillment of God's blessing for you, the foothold that you're enduring for, you'll be blessed and you will be a blessing and all the families of the earth shall be blessed because of you. And that's for us. So what I want to say is God's blessing will move you forward. And you'll have to, you'll have to come to the place where you wait, please hear me, when you wait on God and let the fulfillment, when God is working for you, God will move you forward. So I don't have to move myself forward. You see, Hagar was an option that Sarah created to, move, to try and like say, you don't have to wait for your promise to move forward. God will always fulfill his promise. And in fulfilling his promise, he'll move, he will move you forward. Sarah tried to move Hagar forward to create a promise. But that's the flesh. God will move you forward. So Abraham's blessings, Abraham had seven things that God promised him in his promise or promises. He said, I will make you a great nation. This is what God said to him. I will bless you. I will make your name great. You will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. Now that's called anti-Semitism. Do you know that if you say that the people of Israel are not blessed, you will be cursed? And that still is active today. Because God says he will curse those who curse you. In you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So that was the blessing that God fixed on Abraham. Now I want to just say this, God's blessing is fixed. When you endure and the possibilities of what God has promised to you, you hold on. When you endure, then those things become fixed. Uh, but for this all to happen, all of it, for Abraham, for Moses, for David, for Joseph, and for you, for your blessings to come upon us as God wants us, uh, to to endure just you know Abraham he just it's it's so interesting Abraham only had to do one thing which is hard to believe there's only one thing Abraham had to do he had to wait he just had to wait so Abraham it's like you know it's not like he had to do a bunch of stuff 
he, he literally, and I want to say this, Abraham only had to do one thing for all of that to happen. God gave him the promise, and then he just had to do literally one thing. He had to wait. That's it. He didn't do anything wrong. He was walking in faith. He was listening to God. Somebody tried to, by the arm of flesh, his wife, make something happen. Abraham had to wait, and he waited 25 years. We are sick of COVID after waiting six months. Abraham waited 50 times longer than we are waiting during COVID. 50. So if you think the last six months has been a pain, Abraham waited, Father Abraham, literally a real guy, waited 20, not 25 times longer. He waited 25 years, which is 50 times longer than we've been waiting in COVID. So from the reception of the promise to when the promise was fulfilled, Abraham waited 50 times longer than we're waiting. We've waited about half a year and still this stupid thing's not over. And I'm, I'm sick of this. Who's sick of this? I'm sick of it. I know most of us are saying, get me out of here. I'm sure Moses was getting pretty tired in the 40 years in the, in the desert. I'm sure that David was like getting tired after 15 years of waiting. Imagine that, 15 years from when God spoke. See, what's interesting is these words that God spoke, they were real. And it was 15 years from when God had spoken to David uh, that Samuel uh, anointed him king to when he became king. And imagine all the, like, people want to come to you right now and say, that's not, your promise isn't going to happen. The things that God has promised, they're not going to stand. They don't stand still like this. Imagine what people probably would have said to these four people. God's, pe God's promises don't stand still like this. You don't really have to wait like this. You don't wait, David, 15 years. It's obviously not active. But for Abraham, he waited 25 years and all he did was just kind of, he was a cattle farmer. All Abraham was, was a cattle farmer. He, it's amazing that Abraham was who he was with God. He didn't really do anything spectacular. What did he do? Think about it. And it's not a put down, that's actually real. Abraham really didn't do anything amazing that we would qualify. He waited 25 years. The only thing he did is he waited. That's it. For God and his promises to be fulfilled. So don't think that waiting doesn't play a big part in God performing what he wants to perform in, in us. Abraham, all he did, all he did was wait. All four of these people in the Bible they all had to do the same thing. They had to all wait for the promise of God. God has to work through our endurance and waiting, and then God works us through this. Now, what is it that I mean by God works us through this? It just means that we don't know how long the test will last. We never do. None of us know how long this test before us is going to last and we don't necessarily see the way God is going to make a, how God is going to make it work for us but what I can tell you is that God certainly has promises that he will fulfill in you but remember Abraham all he did to be to be gloriously faithful to God all he did please hear me is one thing he waited don't let anyone tell you that waiting is a failure with God. That's all he did. And for him, God counted it to him as success that he waited. It was accredited to him as righteousness that he believed God that he could do it even while he waited. You see, as Abraham waited, his body became older and older and older. His wife's body became older. How are they going to have a son? They can't, they can't. Abraham waited in the face of what looked like everything going in the opposite direction. The people in the Bible, not only did the promises of the Lord work in the end, but the way that it worked as they waited was that it's the, the appearance to them with their natural eyes was in every one of their situations, everything went in the opposite direction 
as they waited. So I want to say this. There was this uh, amazing story of Elijah and Elisha. Elisha, he uh, had this battle on a mountain, and this is in the Old Testament. It's a very long time ago. The mountain is still there, obviously. It's Mount Carmel. I've been there. I stood on the mountain. And there's this passage in the Bible that um, they were having these dueling battles. Elisha was one prophet of God, and then there were 400 prophets of what was a, a false god, that a person named Jezebel, some of you know what that name means. Uh, she had 400 prophets of Baal, and they, they were trying to see, they were trying to say, hey, whoever kind of, so to speak, prays the hardest, the God that we, that is the real God, he's gonna answer what was called by fire. So they made these kind of bonfires like we do now, only much bigger in our backyards. And they put two bonfires on this mountain and they said, the God who answers by fire, he's the God that's the real God over Israel. And, and uh, Elisha said, not only uh, am I gonna make a bonfire and God will answer by fire, but Elisha took water and doused his wood in water. He made it harder. And remember, many times in the Bible, when God actually does something, it looks like it's all going in the opposite direction. It looks, it's almost like it's looking like it's being made harder. It's like Elijah throwing water on a bonfire. How is God gonna just send a fire down from heaven and light this wood? But let's even see if God can, if we make it wet, light it. And I think that in many ways, like COVID is making us wet, wet. It's wetting our bonfires. And people around us are going, your fire's not going to light there, man. It's like, that's what happened to Joseph. Not only does it look like he's not going to rule, the very brothers he's going to rule over send him in this set, set him, tore his coat, threw him to the ground, and sold him as a slave. It's making it the opposite direction. And in our heart, our feelings are going to be like, man, my life is going the wrong way. You're not going the wrong way. God will fulfill and fix the promises that he's spoken over you. It's not that he forgot about them. He's faithful. Remember, and as I close, I want to say this. God has not forgotten about the promises he's made in you. And he's going to work them through you. And he has a will. The Bible says it's his will. He will establish them. You know, I'm going to just read this as I close, and there's one final verse. I already said this verse, but I'm just going to give it to you again. It's an amazing verse. Hebrews 10, 36. For you have need of endurance. We all do right now. So that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. Some people will tell that, tell, you know, you, you can kind of tell you would think that, well, obviously they've received the promise, therefore they're doing the will of God. That's not what this says. This says you don't even have the promise. The prom receiving the promise isn't a sign that you're doing the will of God. Enduring for the promises is. Because it says you have need of endurance so that when you have done the will of God. See, a lot of people are like, if you get the promise, that means you've done the will of God. And if you don't get the promise, you must have done something wrong. Don't think that way. That's a lie from the devil. God would have fixed this for you if you were doing the will of God. That's not what this says. You're doing the will of God in, in enduring. And as you do the will of God, then you will receive the promise. That's what Abraham did. So let your heart not be troubled. God is going to fix this for you, COVID, this season. COVID, I speak to you in the name of Jesus. Don't discourage another person out there. Don't let COVID drive you down. Don't let this season do you in. You're not out of the will of God. We're not out of the woods. And hear me as I close. We're not out of the woods yet. But you haven't gotten out of the will of God. If you're enduring. We're not out of the woods yet in COVID, but you haven't gotten out of the woods. Or, you, or sorry, you haven't gotten out of the will of God just because you haven't gotten out of the woods. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, you'd send, Lord, you'd, you'd send your salvation in your time. Lord, you've said 
that you've sent your son to us in the middle of the fiery furnace this day. God, we just call out for every person watching online, everyone who has a business, everyone who's not understanding what's going on around them in their, in their life, everyone who's, trying, who's serving you but wondering what's going on because they haven't reached the destination, Lord. That they, they say, how, how do, how, have I gotten off here? Am I doing something wrong? God, I pray that you would fill their hearts with good things. I pray you'd whisper by your Holy Spirit alongside your word. This is the word of God. This isn't, I didn't make any of this up. God, you, were, you, you, you let us see Abraham. Let us see Moses. Let us see King David. Let us see Joseph. Let us not swerve and listen to any voices around us. God, we just, in the name of Jesus, we ignite in our heart a faith that will be faithful to serve you. God, there's no precedence for giving up in the Bible. And may we not swerve right now. Lord, may you make a way in this season for our heart to endure and rest in you in a time where it's, we would see that there might not be an easy way to rest, but may we search the scriptures to know. Lord, may we test every word that comes to us to see if it lines up with what the word of God says. There's promises for our church and the lives of people in our church. And may we see our, our not our word stand, but your word stand, Lord Jesus. May over our church, our lives, our homes, our families, may we serve you and may your word stand in Jesus' name over every individual, over every life, every promise. May it not be broken. May we not give in. In Jesus' name, amen.